So look, I mean, you know, obviously, as I was saying in the interview, I'm I'm a huge fan of this film. I, I, here's the thing: I hadn't heard that quote that you quoted to Ben before about that it was a film that felt like it was in conversation with his other films. But I mean, obviously, yeah. as we said, Kill List and Field in England, um, you know, are very much in the same uh, ballpark. And this d does feel to me like a kind of companion piece to those films. The reasons I like it are manifold. Firstly, I think that, you know, obviously it comes in a tradition of horror, which goes, you know, back to Algernon Blackwood. And then Ben was talking about things like in the 70s, stone tapes, um, stone tape, pardon me. Um, and then I also think you can tie in John Wyndham with that. There is a whole kind of, tr you know, weird nature tradition, which I think it taps into and which works very well for me. Also, it's interesting that he cites Halloween as being the, you know, the text that was that they looked at in terms of, look, can you make a film under these circumstances? See, Halloween is very, you know, it's, it's suburban. But also the, one of the other things from 70s horror is there is a kind of 70s pastoral gothic, which is horror films that take place in the woods, whether it's, you know, Last House on the Left or you know, recently a film like Antrim, which is meant to be an old lost 70s movie. That kind of woodsy feel is brilliantly captured by uh, Nick Gillespie, the, the, the director of, of photography. But the thing that I like about it most was firstly, just as a, as a cinematic experience, I felt like I was walking into those woods. I mean, there's a lovely shot at the beginning when you, you the camera follows our two main protagonists and you see them going into the woods and the camera keeps doing this thing of looking through this hole in the standing stone. And incidentally, I think standing stones are innately fascinating and creepy. I'm really looking forward to um, Mark Jenkins, uh, the forthcoming film, Ennis Main. Um, and so all those ideas are ideas that I like, but I love the way the film leads you into the woods. It has a fairy tale feel to it. It's kind of a bit of a Blair Witchy thing going on. They come across an encampment that looks like there were people there, but maybe it's gone. And then, as you say, they bump into Reese Shearsmith. And then what the film does is it becomes a kind of psychedelic adventure and it becomes a film in which one of the main characters, yes, there are four main actors, but the fifth main character is the forest. It is the wood. And there is this lovely idea of the wood being full of sound. The wood is generating sound. The wood is generating noise. And is, it, is this magic? Is it science? Is it art? And the film is very cleverly unpicking all of those ideas, whilst at the same time being a very simple tale about two people who go into the woods and get lost and bad stuff happens. And when it gets into its kind of um, psychedelic freak out moments, I thought it was it was fabulous. I, I love Clint Mansell's kind of jalo inflected score. I love the fact that there were moments in it that, that, that are proper horror moments that are kind of the gruey and gruelly and, you know, the kind of the, the dirt under your fingernails. But the main thing I, I thought all the way through was that it was just a joyous experience. It felt it felt so cinematic. And, you know, you think about um, the circumstances under which the film was made and then you watch the film yes the film is a film about a pandemic and a contagious deadly pandemic but it's an outdoor film and it embraces that kind of great tradition of horror and as i said i think that that you know ben wheatley's work comes from this kind of combined tradition of on the one hand you know your alan clarks and on the other hand you know your ken russells and your nick rogues and there are certainly moments in the visual freakout stuff that's absolutely altered states, which I still think is one of Ken's best films. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I've watched it a couple of times now. And I, I have to tell you, go see it on a big, big screen. I also know that you feel differently than I I really do. didn't enjoy it. Well, here's <laughs> the thing. I really, really admired it because yeah. um, uh, I'm an admirer of Ben Whitley, but, it, you know, trippy horror is really really not my thing and i i enjoyed the first half more than i enjoyed the second half um i i particular once i had reese shearsmith as robert plant that sort of helped me a little bit <laughs> i, I was expecting that. i was expecting it was full on robert plant <laughs> you know he keeps doing the thing with his hair doesn't he, he keeps doing the thing with parting his hair which is yeah, very robert plant yeah and um there's, and when he says there's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gold, and I thought, oh, okay, this is no, no. But it was it just got too weird and trippy. Uh, okay. So I just think it, you see, I my my worry usually is that things don't get weird and trippy enough, and I think that that is not um, an accusation that could be uh, that could be thrown it in the earth. I I love the fact that it it you know it takes its time and it sets it up and then it goes okay, and now we're going full on. 
And I wanted full on. I mean, I, I sat there smiling and, you know, and wincing and cringing and laughing and enjoying it as it swept over me. And, uh, you know, and I, I do understand, incidentally, that having not been to the cinema for a long time also contributed to this. But then it just means it's the, the right film for the right time. I thought it was great.